Now we're going to look at identifying endothermic and exothermic reactions. First, let's define those two terms. So endothermic means it's a process that requires heat to occur. So it's absorbing energy from the surroundings in the form of heat. That's endothermic. Exothermic is the opposite of endothermic. So it is a process that releases energy to the surroundings in the form of heat. So now to get a better idea between these two terms, let's look at some examples and try and figure out if they're endothermic or exothermic. So our first example is a cold pack. And those are like the packs you see with um, like sports injuries or injuries. So they're used with injuries to provide instant cold. Okay, so if we think about this in terms of heat flow, this is very cold, this pack over here that I've drawn on the left. So heat's going to flow from hot to cold. And that's the main thing that's going to help us out with this. So, because of this, if we draw an arrow to represent our heat flow, our surroundings, are going to be much hotter than the pack. So our heat flow is going to go towards the pack. And if we look at our definitions, what, um, which one describes heat flowing into the process? we look, that one is endothermic. So a cold pack is an endothermic reaction. Because heat flows in. I also get another example of burning wood. So um, if we compare our surroundings to the log that's burning, our surroundings are going to be colder than the burning log, which will be hot. So if we look at our basic idea that heat flows from hot to cold, our heat is going to flow out of the burning log into the surroundings. So looking at our definitions, we try to find where heat's flowing out, and that's with exothermic processes, because they're releasing heat to the surroundings. So it's going to be exothermic because heat is released to surroundings.